Can I help you? Can we do anything for one another? What do you want for Christmas even? I mean, that's the simple one, but you know, how can we take care of one another? That's, that's kind of, to me, that's what Thanksgiving is supposed to be. It's this time where we're focused on one another, but I will also say this, this is a side point here. Part of this, part of this service, but part of what I think is so important about Thanksgiving is this is time where we start to change our focus outward. Um, it's this time where as we're focusing ourselves, you know, getting ready for Advent and everything and getting ready for Christmas, we're focusing ourselves outward because you think about it, this is really, this is the, in a lot of ways the most charitable time of year. This is the time of the year where, you know, you think about it, it's already started here. You go down to the grocery store, there's already people outside ringing bells for the Salvation Army. It's at a lot of the stores around here. This is the time of the year that people, even though we're all concerned with, okay, can I, do I have enough money to get every present that everybody wants? Do I have enough to take care of everybody? We're still thinking, oh, there's that person ringing the bell. I don't have any cash on me, but I'm going to get 10 out of the register and then put that in. We think about, we start to think about other people. And I think that that's something that is just so incredibly important, especially as Christians, because we are supposed to be outwardly focused people. And if you don't believe me, it's scripture time. So our scripture comes from two separate places today. The first reading is from Acts 2. And uh, I've kind of extended it a little bit, so I apologize, but... Um, well, we'll start here. Everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostles. And all the believers lived in a wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home. Every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw. Every day, their number grew as God added to those who were saved. And then from chapter 4. While they were praying, the place where they were meeting trembled and shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak God's word with fearless confidence. The whole congregation of believers was united as one, one heart, one mind. They didn't even claim ownership of their own possessions. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. They shared everything. The apostles gave powerful witness to the resurrection of the master Jesus, and grace was on all of them. And so it turned out that not a person among them was needy. Those who owned fields or houses sold them and brought the price of the sale to the apostles and made an offering of it. The apostles then distributed it according to each person's need. It's the word of God. So, probably picked up on it already through that, but the apostles, this, most of this, I understand that most of the book of Acts takes place after Jesus is ascended into heaven. So it's the establishment, what, we, what I've just read to you is a big part of the establishment of the community of Jesus following believers that felt that they needed to bring in all of their belongings, everything that they owned, and share it with one another because they wanted to take care of one another. It also says in Acts 4 that, that when people traveled to the community where the Jesus followers were, where the apostles were, that these people would come from faraway lands and would go home telling stories saying, I, just, I was on this travel and it was, it, was, it was treacherous, it was dangerous, but I met these Christians along the way and they would give the shirt off their back for you and they never even met me and they brought me in and fed me. How awesome would it be to be that place again? How awesome would it be if Acts 11.15 was the place that people knew we can come here and we can help fill each other's needs and have our needs filled? And this is where we get to the next part because this part is the hardest one for me. A lot of us, especially if we've been raised in church and we've spent a fair amount of time around it, a lot of us do like that feeling of going out and helping. You know, a lot of people will do mission trips. We donate money. We do all these things, but... A lot of us, and I, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for you, I'm speaking for me here. Some of us are really not comfortable allowing others to help. And we're not comfortable accepting help. So quick story. This morning, some of you may not know this, I get here and Sophia and Noah get here at 8 in the morning on Sunday mornings. 
and we spill water all over the stage. I promise I'll get that up. Luckily, it's not here any cords. Um, and this morning, we had had a miscommunication where uh, Tony, who's running the AV for us, uh, was kind of let know last minute that he was going to be helping, and Tony didn't know he had to be here at 8 this morning. And because I'm me, we sat here for, and Sophia and Noah can clarify this for you, we sat here outside for 15 or 20 minutes with me going, oh, they might show up. I don't know what to do. I really just, oh, man. We, what are we going to do if we can't get in? Because I was afraid to text anybody to say, hey, could you unlock the door? Because that's a lot to ask. And my whole point of that is that, luckily, I actually said to Taylor, as she was, my wife Taylor, as she was going over to the other church for an early service today, I said, hey, um, could, you, could you possibly check with people over there and see if anybody's got a key and could let us in? Because, you know, I, we, I mean, we can do church out back, but it's not as comfortable. Um, but the reason I bring that up is that it actually made me think about, about this sermon because I, I'm really, I wasn't going to say anything about this, but good Lord, I am so bad, and so many of us are, about not telling people what we need. And friends, as much as you are quick to help others, be quick to let them know what you need from them. I'm not saying go ask people for like massive things that there's no reason that they should help you with. But what I am saying is, if you need somebody to open the door for you, ask. If you need something from this congregation, whether it's prayer, whether it's uh, just time together, whether it's somebody to come and talk to, please, please, please let us know because that is what a community of believers does. It's right there. It's right there in what I just read. The community of believers is meant to be there for one another, to help one another, to love one another. A lot of this, I understand, is sounding like what I was talking about last week. That's on purpose. That this is a place, Acts 11.15, not just, not just church and the, the faith community. Acts 11.15 needs to be a place full of people that are quick to love, quick to help, but also willing to admit when we're wrong or when we need somebody to help us. Again, I'm not good at this. This is something that we can work on together. But it also ties back into those cards sitting in these cup holders. If you have something that you've been holding, something that's been hurting you, and you're afraid to tell us, please, it's not going to get out only one or two people is going to see it. And I promise you, those two people are not going to judge you. There is nothing, nothing that you can say or do that would, hurt, that would hurt the way that we feel about you. There's nothing that you can say or do that will make us love you less. And I promise you on a personal basis, if you ever want to talk to me about anything, there is nothing that you can say that's going to make me think less of you because I've probably been there too. Understand this is a place of love. And part of that is being willing to accept help when you need it. Let us pray. God, we come before you this morning, people in need of help. We want to help others. We want to serve the world, but we also need to every once in a while slow down and realize that maybe in our attempts to help everyone else, we've allowed ourselves to become hurt and never thought to ask for help. Maybe, maybe so many of us think that we haven't built up enough credit to be able to ask for help, and so we don't, and we suffer in silence. And that's never what you intended for us, God. You've shown us so clearly that this community of, of loving believers can fill one another's needs so that not one of us is in need, whatever that need may be, whether it's psychological, physical, spiritual, Help us to understand that it's okay for us to not be full and not be whole, but that together we can become whole. We can help build one another up, and we can allow others to build us up. In your name we pray. Amen. Would those that are helping with communion please come forward? So this is the time in our service, um, no matter what week you had or, or what month you've had, where we come in remembrance. Um, and so what we're remembering is that um, 
it's not about what we can do, what we can give, but it's about what God has given us. And what he's given us is um, his one and only son um, who he sent to this earth um, to die in place of us um, so that our sins could be forgiven. And so this son, Jesus, on his final night on earth, gathered with his 12 disciples and he took the bread and he broke it and he said, do this in remembrance of me. Um, then he took the glass of wine um, and he said, this is my blood shed for you. Um, do this every time that, that you drink. And so um, we ask that you come. Um, this is a time where we become reconciled with, with God for, for whatever our week has looking like. Um, and so we ask that you come and you receive the Holy Spirit. Um, so directions here. There's going to be an usher that is going to um, direct you to come down. If you would exit to uh, your right and then enter back through the left. Hey, Laura, could we have your upload too, please? Sorry. <laughs> abounds in deepest waters <laughs> your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now so I call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul Trust is with the borders, and me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Bring me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. 
Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. All right, and now is part of the service where um, we give back. Um, and God loves a cheerful giver. Please do not give out of obligation. Um, please give out of the, the gladness.